if we want to find out relationship between variables, then we use regression. So let's say you want to find out what is the relationship between the weight of a diamond carrot and the cost that it's going to be sold at, then you use a regression. So if you want to predict one thing and its relationship with the other thing, then you use regression. And the simplest regression is a linear regression. A linear regression is a line which uh, plots on the x-axis an explanatory variable, which is basically what explains the behavior of the y variable, which is the response variable. So an example for this could be price as the explanatory variable, and then response variable would be the cost or the price at which you will you know, buy it. So explanatory variables are variables that explain uh, or try to predict the response variable. And so a linear regression would be, you know, when let's say these are your data points, uh, then you could draw a line that minimizes the sum of square of residuals. A regression is a line that minimizes the sum of sca squared residuals. And residuals, we looked at it in the previous few videos, is basically the distance from this line. You try to draw a line in such a way that it's the distance from each of these points from that line is as minimum as possible. Meaning you're trying to predict, you're trying to draw a trend. And you draw a trend, you first try to draw a line like this. And then you'll find out that, hey, it has a lot of distance from all of these points. So then you get rid of this line and then you say, hey, this is gonna be that line that minimizes the distance from all of the points, right? So now, as you see, these are our data points. What do we see here? We see a big gap here, right? We see a big gap here, and then we see that, hey, there, there's uh, um, some clustering here and some clustering here. So we want to know whether our regression is actually uh, having a good fit. And so we need measures of fit. Once we have regressions, and this regression can be done easily when you have two variables, price and uh, cost, you can actually do this in Excel data packs very easily. And, and the plot that you can plot is, is the scatter plot. Scatter plot is, is very easy. You can, you, can, you, can, uh, you can plot the scatter plot with the line plot as well, which gives you uh, the regression line. And it gives you lots of statistics as well. It'll tell you like what is the R squared. It'll tell you what is the standard deviation uh, uh, of uh, these two variables. It'll tell you lots of statistics. And so with that statistics, you can actually form the equation of this line. And the equation of this general line would be y hat equals b0, which is the intercept. In this case, it could be this one, right? If, if you extrapolate, you will see that, hey, it intersects here. And then b1 would be the slope, right? What is the change in y uh, for a given change in x, right? You can also calculate b1 from the Excel statistics for this regression using R, which is correlation between X and Y, and the standard deviation of Y and standard deviation of X. And these all statistics are easily calculated by Excel and will give you when you plot a regression with Excel data pack. So B1 slope can be found using R, SY and SX, which are standard deviation of Y and standard deviation of X. And then B0 can be found similarly by taking average of Y, which is all of those Y variables average, average of X, and then plotting in B1 right here. So we can form the lines equation. Once we have the lines equation, for any given point, we can predict like what would be the price. So that's the beauty. We get the line, then we can like plot it for any different point. But there is this trick. We don't want to extrapolate too long, you know, let's say you, you, you have this line for these data points and you're trying to now extrapolate for a point here or, a, or an X here, but it's, it's way too far. So you'd have to use judgment to not extrapolate way beyond your data points. And that's the art that we'd want to get better at as to are you extrapolating too much in the left-hand side or are you extrapolating too much on the right-hand side? So extrapolation is something that we want to be careful for. But typically within the range, now once we have a regression that has a good fit, we can now for any given X, we can say what would be the Y, right? 
So that's the beauty of regression. It minimizes some of squared residuals, meaning it, it tries to give you the best trend possible, draws the best line possible. And the way you check whether the line is fitting really well is by three things. One is looking at the standard error. So standard deviation of the residuals, this is something that Excel can give you, this has to be as minimum as possible, right? So it's basically the standard deviation of the residual. So you'll take each of these residuals and then find out like what is the standard deviation. So as minimum of standard deviation of residuals or SE standard error, then that's better. R squared is basically saying what fraction of this uh, response variable Y is explained by this regression line. So if you get R squared equals 0.8, means 80% of your response variable action is now explained by this regression. So higher the R squared, the better. So R squared should be as high as possible. Standard error with standard deviations of the residual should be as low as possible. But, our, but these two are not sufficient. There's a third one that you need. You need an eyeball test. An eyeball test is needed because an eyeball test is needed to first plot the scatter plot and then, and then look at the plot. Because very quickly you'll find out, hey, there is this clustering happening. Hey, there's a, there's a big gap here. So maybe there's some problems, you'll go deep into it. Maybe you will find out, hey, there's a big drop at the very end, meaning there's a reversal in, in trend in a pretty major way. The R square could be quite high for this, even with this you know, outlier. But then you will miss out that if you want to try to predict this data point, then it would have been very low um, price compared to this data point. So you would really want to do an eyeball test with plotting your scatter plot. And remember always, unless you run an experiment, you cannot say X causes Y, right? Correlation is not equals causation. It's the biggest learning unless you run an experiment. You run an experiment, you run a randomized uh, control treatment that we understood in the previous videos, then you can say for the short term, this is a causal link. Right? You will remove all lurking variables. But remember this other piece. Experiments are really good for short term. For long term, those experiments may not hold true. There could be impact of competition. Let's say you run an experiment, you get some uh, prediction and a trend line, but this constantly changes. The world changes. There could be, you know, the competition can come in and start eating your business and then the trend line actually goes down. So constant experimentation is needed. Also short run versus long run experimentation is very different. So be careful on causation. It can be good for that period of time, but you'd want to run longitudinal studies to really check that there's no long-term impact on the business. So linear regression, straight line is good, but what if we, we got a line, we, we, did a, we got a plot that looked like this one. Sales and price, let's look at uh, that as a price as the, uh, our explanatory variable and then sales as the response variable. We can also do a log transformation, especially if we see lots of outliers, then we can try various types of transformation. One other transformation, one type of transformation is a log transformation. Um, so in a log function, it looks like this one. Log of uh, one, what is log of one? Log of one is uh, zero. And then uh, log of 10 is 2.3. And log of uh, 11 is 2.4, right? So a 10% increase from 10 to 11 has a 0.1 change. Similarly, log of 10 is 4.6, log, log of 110 is 4.7. So 0.1 change, again, for a 10% increase, right? So as you can see, log represents like approximate change in percentages. So outliers sensitivity is reduced with logs. So especially if you see that, hey, for certain functions, you are uh, under predicting, right? In this case, we are under predicting for these data points. And for here, we are over predicting. And then again, we are under predicting. At that point, you see that there's a curve pattern coming up. The R square for this would be quite high. Standard error might point you to the fact that, hey, there is something going on here. So then what you could do is you could do a log of this Y. So once you do log of Y, then you can, you can quickly see that the line, the new log line fits, fits much more better. The residual plot, this is our residual plot. 
So both of these residual plots, we see like, uh, you know, clustering happening above, below, again above. Here it's like clustering, there's no clustering, it's like points above and below. So residual plots gives us a very clear hint that, hey, there is, there's probably a curve pattern that might fit well. So it's always better to transform your, uh, your, uh, your data points to log and see if, if there's a better fit. Again, you cannot really compare the R square of this one with R square of this one because these are two different uh, response variables. But but residual plot gives us a really good way to get a better fit. Once we get a better fit, our our prediction would be much better. Like right? like if I say what would be the prediction of this, you could you could easily find out that it will actually be in this line. Versus if I were to give a prediction of this, I'd get you this, but it's actually somewhere here. So log fits much better, uh, but be careful to not extrapolate too much. Be careful not to uh, compare R squared for two different response variables, right? So these, this was the equation of our line. And so we can, we can do four combinations. We can keep it as is, y and x is as is, or we can take log of y and log of x, and then we'll get this function. So a log log on both of the sides uh, is basically saying a percentage increase, one percent increase in x causes b1 percentage increase in y. But if you just take log on one side and not on the other side, then you can say one unit increase in x causes b1 times 100 percentage increase in y, right? Because now you have log transform the other function. So similarly, you could, you could do a log transformation of x, but not do of y, and then you can see various plots as to which one's fitting really well. Um, when it's log log on both sides, uh, it's, it's actually the slope is represents, b1 slope here represents elasticity. It's basically percentage increase in x uh, or decrease or increase or decrease each to percentage increase or decrease in y. So this was great. We now are entering into regression. Linear regression is very powerful, gives us the relationship and, and a very good terminology of explaining um, relationship between variables. And we looked at curve patterns. We looked at measures of fit, three different uh, important measures of fit. Remember to do always eyeball test and remember always to do R squared and standard error tests. All righty. And then when we, when we want to um, get back to a prediction, you would want to either do it in a perfect uh, unit or you would want to unlog it and then, and then, and then do the exponential uh, way to find out the price. All right, thanks.